Okay, here's the truck. We're all loaded up. We got ba both brand new feeders in here. And each feeder holds 400 pounds of feed. And that's a galvanized metal there. I bought this feed here. It's record rack from Tractor Supply. 50 pound bags for $12. So I'm gonna put 300 pounds of that and mix it with 100 pounds of this Big and J. This is just gonna be a scent attractant to try to transfer them over to the pellets. But I've got bags of feed everywhere. The whole truck is full of stuff here. And this record rack, if you wanna know, here's the ingredients on it. It's all grain products. It's got 20% protein, uh, and it's got 14% fiber, and it's got some fat in there. And it's all grain byproducts, but in the wintertime it's good because it's got fiber, and in the springtime it'll be good because it has a lot of protein. So that's, that is actual deer, deer feed. And I want to transition them from the Big and J and corn over to just pellets. So we've got all our stuff here, and we're gonna take it all up to the farm and, and uh, see if the deer like it. All right, so here we are. We're gonna unload the feeders. I wanna take them out in the field. There's a lot of stuff in that truck to get out, and I'm gonna load up my little wagon and the buggy right here, and we'll see if we can get through all this snow and get out there to the fields. All right, we got that all loaded. It wasn't as bad as I thought getting out. I thought I'd have all kinds of problems. The buggy started, which is good, but there's a lot of weight on that. And I don't know if this little, if this little cart's gonna make it through this snow going across the fields. If it doesn't make it, I'm gonna have to make trip after trip and try to strap that thing on top of the buggy to drive it out there. But we're gonna try to get everything we need in one shot. Let's see how it works. So we got a little problem. The road has ruts on either side and the wheels on that are so narrow that if I can't keep it dead center on that hump, it tips over. It just tipped over one time, but I was barely moving, so it didn't even do anything, but it is really bad up there. So this, I don't know. We'll see if we can make it real slow. We gotta go all the way up that hill there. I made it through the one of the worst parts back here. You can see it. We're still going uphill. And I know around this bend, it's pretty bad around this bend up here. It's actually on a hill, on a on a slant, so I might have to just drag this thing around this corner up here because I'll have to make a decision either let the buggy tip or the feeder tip and I don't want to do either all right here's the bad spot right here I think if I can stay along this hillside and not let anything tip over in that ravine there that little gully I might be able to make it. I'm gonna take it, take it slow.
Boy, that was that was slim shady. I need a whole bunch of rocks to fill in this whole side, and this side here, this this uh, the ditch here for the water runoff needs to be redone. But all this road, all the way down, needs new rock. But th this definitely got to get fixed. All right, we made it right at the feeder, and I'm going to replace this feeder with this one right in this area right here. It's got to face southeast because the winds come from the northwest so it this is a a trough feeder like it's a two-part system it has a hopper and then the trough but in order to keep it dry it, it's got to face away from the wind and i'm going to set it up somewhere right here but you can see all the deer that's been coming trying to hit this thing and it's just it's just empty they're great feeders but i think i'm losing 20 percent of my feed 15 percent of it ends on the ground and I would say at least 5% raccoons scoop it all out. And it all up on, it ends up on the ground and turn it into mud. Um, I probably should have had that 35 inches or something high enough to where the raccoons couldn't reach that. But they're great feeders. The problem is you got in less than a week, it's empty. It holds 70 pounds, but I have so many deer coming here that it's just not enough. It, it, within a, less than a week, it's, it's empty. So this one holds 400 pounds and we're going to swap them out. Okay, well using the pounder was no good. The ground is so frozen, it doesn't do anything. So I had to walk around and try to find a couple rocks. Of course you can't find rocks when you, when you need one, only when you're trying to work in the fields do you find all the rocks. But I had to lift up the back a little bit. It's not bad, it's pretty level. And I believe the winds come from that way, but I'm gonna check it on my phone here and make sure I got it facing the right way. All right, it's pretty good. So that is almost perfect the way uh, from the Northwest. And there's the camera on the tree. And I was afraid I'd have to turn it so much that I wouldn't get the deer eating out of it on camera. But the way that it's facing, it's gonna work out. Not bad. You can see, look at that, pretty good.
last bag, and this sucker is full. I mean, full to the top. Give it a little bit of a mix. This last bag. Actually, it's so full. I'm going to have to uh, show you how it works to let some of the feed fall down. All right, let's go down to the front. So you feed the hopper in the back, and it's just gravity fed. It falls down through here, and as they eat, it just refills from the back. You can see as I'm pulling it down, more is just flowing in. Let me get you a close up here. So, watching this corner, look in the back. As they eat, it just falls down. And you can see it works because the dogs are down there eating everything I've dropped. The feed actually is, I guess is what they're after. It's good, it smells good. And I want to put some on the ground, but not when the, the dogs will eat it. I'll have to do it right before I leave. And you can see here, there's a hundred pounds of Big and J right here and then the rest of the feed is right there. That record rack, sportsman's record rack, that's 300 pounds of that and 100 of the Big and J. And to put the lid on, it actually comes with a lid. So I'll, let's stay right there. You just flip this over. Bungee cords. It's got some bungees on. And that's it. That's how it goes. Now that T-post from the old feeder is a six and a half foot T-post, and that sucker is in the ground at least three feet. I can't pull that out. I can't even budget, so I'm gonna have to come up with a tractor or something and pull that out of the ground. But that thing is in there, it's loaded up. And I put it on these two by sixes, I bolted it, lag bolted it to the two by sixes. And uh, in case I ever wanted to skid it around, I'll put some cross braces with a hook and I'll be able to skid it around if I need to. And I also didn't want the galvanized steel to go onto the ground and eventually sink down into the mud. But I had to lift it up with some rocks because I can't dig the ground, it was frozen. But I think it's going to settle. I think it'll settle down. The back of it is to the northwest as best as I could to still be able to get pictures of them eating out of it. So we've got one more feeder to set up in a different location. And I'm going to, right before I leave, I'm going to put a whole bunch of this on the ground right here before the dogs get it. So the deer can uh, get used to this thing. We'll see how long it takes. Those little green feeders, the um, redneck feeders, it took them about three days and they were eating out of that thing. So they come up, come here every day to check it. All right, we ran into a problem. Pulling out this second feeder, this little Harbor Freight cheap wagon right here, the little bolt broke right there and that's what's the pivot for the front wheel so as I'm pulling because I broke the wheels are just turning sideways and dragging so I got to find something to stick in there and I found this drill bit and if I can drop this drill bit down in there maybe it'll just stay in there long enough for me to get this up there I couldn't line up all three. 
I couldn't line up that one. The middle one and then the bottom one. So I just moved this one out of the way. Hopefully we can get there. So this is a new location for us, but we saw a lot of deers running this corner around the field right here. So hopefully we can draw some in this field and in the other field that we put the other feeder in and then a couple more. Now we got cameras facing all this stuff, so I'll get the picture sent to my phone. We've got cameras watching cameras now because uh, of trespassers. So uh, I'll do an update video and send you some video and pictures of the animals hitting this and one of the cool things is it's too high and there's nothing to grab for the raccoon so I don't mind feeding the critters but with the old feeders I was losing too much feed on the ground and with the raccoons and I'll show you a picture of a whole pack of raccoons right now and I'll show you a picture of all the food that falls on the ground with the other feeders right now What we want, want to do is try to hold the does here because if you can hold the does here come buck season all the bucks will be here too um, so don't shoot your does on your own property unless you got too many or unless you need meat but if you can keep your does there um, the bucks will be there during rifle season or bow season and this hill this whole hill to my left which is i don't know maybe it's it's got to be at least 50 acres is just all pure bedding area the whole thing it, it was clear cut maybe four or so years ago but it's all growing back now all beech trees and oak trees and scrub and sticker bushes so this this whole hillside is where we want to keep them and then strategically put up stands uh, for hunting season but the feeders will help keep them here